Cactus. 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 ELA Radio. Most people in businesses have some form of an answering service. Some of them are voicemail systems, and some are just regular old-fashioned answering machines. And most of them can be hacked in some way. By this, I mean that you can call into their voicemail, enter a code, and check their messages, change their outgoing message, and do some other miscellaneous things. It's a whole lot easier than you might think to get into a person's private voicemail system. A few years back, Murdoch and I started calling out movie theaters and asking them what kind of answering machines they were using for their movie announcement lines. It turned out that most of them were using regular store-bought answering machines, instead of some kind of fancy movie theater system like we expected. How may I help you? Oh, hi. Is this the manager? This is the manager on duty. How can I help you? Oh, uh, this is John from the home office up in Springfield. We were wanting to find out which kind of recording equipment you have for the movie theater line. Oh, we have a regular answering machine. It's just one line. Oh, okay. You have to just do one main message. That's it. Do you happen to have the brand? Um, hold on. Let me check. I, I was supposed to get that from everybody because we're going to be sending out new machines soon. Okay, hold on. Let me check and see. Okay. Really, man. It's an AT&T model. Any, uh, but do you have the model number, though? Um, 1710. AT&T 1710? Yeah, that's what's sitting right on top of it. After quickly looking up the answering machine's user manual on AT&T's website, we found out that the two-digit access code was written on the bottom of the machine. So we called back and Murdoch got the theater to give us the access code. My, my colleague Dale called in a couple minutes ago inquiring about a new upgrade that you guys will be getting soon about your movie line answering machines. And, and we need to know what, what the um, access code is for the answering machine that you have currently. It's on the, it's on the bottom by the battery door. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay. The access code is 95. 95? Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, you guys will be getting a new upgrade in about a couple of weeks, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Bye. And then several minutes later, the movie theater ended up with a brand new message that sounded like this for the rest of the evening. Thank you for calling <laughs> Cinema. Playing today, I need your cock at 1, 3, 5, and 9. Mike Hunt, HS, playing at 1.30, 3.30, 4, and 7. Come gargling naked sluts at 3, 5, and 7. Huge black cocks with pearly white comb, playing at 9 and 11. Men Alone 2, the KY Connection, playing at 12 and 1. And a special one, Happy Scrappy, the Hero Pup, playing at 12, 1, 4, and 7. Thank you for calling. They ended up taking their movie announcement line completely down after that, so I called them and asked them what happened to it, and this is the explanation that they gave me. Do you have a new recording line? Um, they're working on getting it fixed. Um, it went down yesterday. Oh. Somebody dialed over it, and so now they basically froze it up, so we're get, trying to get a new one in. Froze it up? Yeah, like they dialed in over it and scrambled it somehow with a code, and we can't unscramble it, so we have to get a new one. Oh, I see. You would think that this would be an isolated incident and that that particular manager just happened to be not very bright, but actually most movie theater managers will believe you when you call them up with the same ruse. I ended up tricking several other movie theaters out of their codes as well. One of them resulted in this new message on their machine. Hi, my name's Jared, and I'm an elite hacksaw. I just hacksawed this answering machine by using my elite hacksaw skills... I called up the manager of this theater, and I'm all like, Hey, can you give me your machine code? Because I'm your boss. And she's like, Sure! So I got the secret code, and now I'm just hacksering all over the place like a madman. So if you'd like to be a hacksaw just like me, you can press 9-5 right now for access to this machine. And we can be hacksers together, and you can listen to messages, and we'll be hacksers. Have a nice Friday. And then another movie theater ended up with this message, which lasted for almost 24 hours. Thank you for calling Cactus Cinemas. Now showing in Cinema 1, War Games, starring Matthew Broderick, Ali Sheedy, and Dabney Coleman. Running time is 1 hour and 45 minutes. Show times are at 5 p.m., 7.15 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. In Cinema 2, we have Sneakers, starring Robert Redford, Dan Aykroyd, and that kid who's dead now. Running time, 1 hour and 73 minutes. Show times are at 5.15, 7.30 and 8.45 p.m. And in Cinema 3, we have Hackers, starring Zero Cool, Acid Burn, and that guy that played Shaggy in the Scooby-Doo movies. 
Running time is 2 hours and 45 minutes. And show times are 5 p.m., 7.18, and midnight. Ticket prices are insane for matinees and fucking nuts after 6 p.m. Popcorn refills are free on all concession stand orders over $50, which isn't that hard to achieve. Thanks again for calling Cactus Cinemas. Sadly, hacking movie theater machines isn't going to be possible for too much longer since most theaters are switching over to Fandango instead of having the old-fashioned answering machine line. But there's still Walmart. Most Walmarts have a portrait studio inside them called Picture Me. And Slacker from the PLA forums recently told me that they all use AT&T's Model 1719 answering machine to announce their services when people call in. By looking at the user manual for this machine, which you can find on Google, you'll see what the default three-digit code is. And by calling any Picture Me studio in the country, you'll find out that very few of them bother to change their default code, even though they can. Because really, what kind of person would want to hack into a Picture Me studio's answering machine? Thank you for calling your Picture Me Portrait Studios, located in... You have three messages in mailbox. One. Wednesday, 5.57 p.m. Hi, this is Betty Walker. I was calling about my pictures. My number is 7963305. Can you... End of messages. Hi, I'm calling from Walmart. Is Betty Walker in? This is Shay. How can I help you? Well, you called about your pictures. I'm just returning your call. Okay. What, what do you need? Are they ready? Um, what kind of set did you have? The silver. The one with the kids? Yes. You had the ugly kids, right? I have the ugly kids. My kids are not ugly. Well, that's a matter of opinion, I think. Bitch, don't. You a bitch. Don't call me, okay? What? No, I'm returning your call. You called us. Well, I was calling. Don't call my kids ugly. Well, I'm okay? just I'm trying to figure out which set it is here because um, the names aren't on here. So we have ones with kind of cute well, no kids. No kids are ugly, okay? Well, yours are. Well, your mama. What? I said your mama. What about my mama's not in these pictures? Well, she's an ugly bitch and don't call my house. You don't know my mama. Let me tell you something. Hey, I'm gonna you put your I'm gonna put your pictures in the shredder. Call. Well, you know something, you can do whatever you want. Listen to, to this. I'm shredding your pictures. That's fine. There they go. Okay. Ugly kids in the shredder. Okay, your mama. Your ugly kids are in my. Thank sh- you. You're not getting any pictures from us. That's fine. And you still have to pay for them, though. Whatever. You're paying for these goddamn pictures. I'm getting ready to go up to Walmart right now and file a complaint against you. Well, you, you started it. Because you call my house. And call my kids ugly, you got a problem, okay? You're unprofessional, don't call my house no it's more. It's Walmart, what do you expect? It's well, I don't care who it is. Well, you, you pay for discount pictures, do you expect great A service? I don't pay for no dis- Well, you know something, if you shred my pictures after you call my kids ugly, I will file charges against your ass. And let me tell you something. It's not against the law to have an opinion. You can't file well, charges and, and against you, me. You know something? I didn't have an opinion about you. You don't have an opinion about me. Well, I have an now, opinion about you. Now, you call me. here and, and call my kids ugly, you don't even know my kids. You got a problem. Well, I don't have to know them to see that they're ugly. Don't worry about it. Just, you know something? Don't call my house with that. And I'm getting ready. I'm on my way to Walmart right now. And if you are up there, I'm, I'm going to see you. Okay, my name's Roy. Okay, Roy, I'm, I'm coming up there right now. I'm in the portrait studio. Okay. I'll see you when you get here. So far, we've just explored regular answering machine hacking, and there's a lot more to it, but if I kept going, this episode would be over an hour long and even more boring than usual. So we're going to move on to a method of hacking voicemail boxes on wireless phones. When you call someone's cell phone and they don't answer, you get a regular message, like this one. Hi, you've reached Christy. I'm unavailable to take your call at this time. Please leave a detailed message, and I'll return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. But if you call from their cell phone number instead, you're greeted with voicemail options to listen to messages and do other administrative tasks. With some wireless carriers, you can trick a person's voicemail into thinking you're calling from their phone by using caller ID spoofing. Caller ID spoofing allows you to change the number that's seen on a person's caller ID, and you can change the number to pretty much anything you want. There are several services on the internet that allow you to do this easily and for very cheap, and I'll list a few of those in the show notes. 
Once you've set up a caller ID spoofing account, you use it to call the person's cell phone number from their own number. For this example, I'm using a lady's AT&T wireless service. I don't think this works with all wireless carriers. I know it used to work with Sprint and T-Mobile, but I'm too lazy to try any other carriers besides AT&T for this. Anyway, here's what you hear when you call a wireless number from itself. You have three unheard messages. First unheard message sent Wednesday, June 11th at 11.49 a.m. Hey, Chris, I uh, saw your email last night about an, another pressure washer needed, and uh, I do have one in case you... Message deleted. Next message sent today at 8.05 p.m. Hey, Christy, it's Brad from PLA Radio, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm getting ready to hack your voicemail. Call you right back. End of message. To delete this message, press 7 to save it in the... As you heard, I left Christy a voicemail the first time I called her number. You can do all the regular things inside a voicemail box, like listen to messages, delete them, and change their outgoing message for other callers to hear. Personal greeting. At the tone, record your greeting. At the end of your greeting, press pound. Hello, this is Christy. I'm unavailable to take your call at this time. Please leave a detailed message after the tone, and I'll get back to you. (coughs) If you are satisfied with your greeting, press pound. It is possible with most carriers to add a layer of security onto your cell phone so that people can't do this to you. If you go through the options on your voicemail menu, you can change it so you have to type in your passcode every single time you call into your voicemail. This way, if someone spoofs their way into your voicemail, they'll be asked for a passcode. Most people don't bother with this, though, since it's inconvenient, myself included. I'm going to end this show here, but if you're interested in answering machine hacking, there's a lot of information on it on the internet. PLA forums even have a few threads dedicated to it. I know this is probably obvious, but breaking into an answering machine or a voicemail is illegal and you shouldn't do it. This show is only to show you how to secure your own voicemails and PLA Radio is not responsible if you decide to use this information for evil purposes. Be a good Christian.